What's up boys and girls, this is Luminaire, and this is my second Let's Play, and boy have I got a good one for you. The ever popular, ever crazy, super niche, and amazing, Disgaea. But not just any Disgaea, the brand new Disgaea 4. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that glorious intro. Oh, this is something I've been wanting to do for... Well, actually... I, I had only just finished my uh, Puzzle Quest 2, and I said, hmm, what game am I going to play next? Uh, I want it to be something something more people have heard of, something uh, a bit more entertaining, since I gotta admit, the Puzzle Quest was kind of slow-paced. Um, uh, and then, I'm like, what's coming out soon? Um, oh, look at this, two weeks, this guy of four. Decision made. <laughs> Why? Because, well... This decision was kind of made easily for me. If you've never played a Disgaea game, the appeal will be apparent very shortly. If you have played the other Disgaea games, you know exactly what I'm going to be getting into. Um, so Disgaea is a crazy over-the-top anime strategy RPG. Um, it's, it's just ludicrous and very... Uh, wacky. It doesn't really take itself super serious compared to other RPG stories. Um, the first game was on the PlayStation 2, now in like 2003, I want to say, on the PlayStation 2. Um, bit of a sleeper hit, you know. Uh, they didn't. Um, it was like the first game by Nipponichi, I want to say, that came over to America. No, no, I think La Pucelle was first actually, but. Um, yeah, not, not many, uh, they didn't release a lot, but once people, uh, got it, word of mouth and the internet, um, level cap 999, no, sorry, 9999, people are like, oh man, this is insane, where can I get it? Nope. And then, <laughs> sorry, this, uh, copies were, became extremely rare and hard to find for months. That, um, but demand was so high that they re-released, um, the game again on the DS and PSP as up as updated and they published more copies on the PlayStation 2 itself um, just so people could buy it and after that um, the later games this guy 2 and 3 uh, were received and became much more popular than the initial game and they even released some other series like Phantom Brave and Makai Kingdom uh, I have only really played the Disgaea games whereas my my old roommate used to play the old um, pretty much every Nipponichi game, and that, oh, that little penguin, that's a printy. You're gonna like those guys. Um, yeah, basically, th th these games are just so long, you could put in hundreds of hours easily maximizing your characters. Like I said, level 9,999 is the maximum level, and here I'm just looking at the um, options here, like, let's see, I played the other games, so I know that I want movement speed to be fast, there's no reason to, for it to be slow, it just takes up time, um, text, I'm making it faster, I'm gonna keep the voices in English, because I wanna hear how those sound, um, voice acting in English was hit or miss, I know a lot of people prefer the Japanese voices, but, um, I, I kinda like the English voices in 3, and, okay, um, I'm actually doing this recording, Post play, so I've already played a bit of the game, and I'm adding my commentary afterwards. So I've heard the English voices, and they are good. Like they are funny. I am laughing at the delivery, especially Val Torres, who is the main character, and you'll see him shortly. I, I I like it a lot. I haven't heard the Japanese voices. I'm sure they're great. I I watch a lot of anime in Japanese, but okay, I'm gonna have to shut it up now because uh, here's the story. Since the dawn of time, humans have always feared the darkness. Vampires, werewolves, zombies, ghosts. Although it differs slightly from culture to culture, tigers and bears. Oh my! <laughs> fear of the darkness has grounded them into living conservatively. Conservative. In the current world, thanks to wars, terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, accidents caused by human error, and daily incidents of murder, humans have grown to fear the actions of their own kind even more than the darkness itself. This is the story of a group of heroes who have stood up to fight back against such a corrupted society. The fresh 
dripping blood, fangs sinking into its skin. Oh, what a splendid taste. Extract of life overflows and fills my body. I can He's a vampire. Its power. Oh, the waves of ecstasy. How oh, magical. Are oh, these insignificant creatures known as sardines? <laughs> I love it. His name is Valva Torres, an elite vampire who was once feared for being a tyrant. In spite of his legend, he now spends his life in Hades, the netherworld's prison, admiring sardines. Really admiring sardines. Like, you but have no idea. Of Stuart Fenwick who routinely showers his master with praise and compliments. As expected of you, Lord Valvatores. No matter the hardships or circumstances, you are ever the optimist, my lord. Gotta love Fenric. <laughs> Listen to this, Fenric. Sardines are the most ideal food because they are full of nutrients, like omega-3 fatty acids. Name another RG that talks about they fish like this. Blood, prevent various diseases and help you to burn more fat. I've been here for quite some time, but I never knew these cheap sardines possess so much potential. One should never underestimate the studies that are conducted in the human world. <laughs> there is no doubt that my body is benefiting from these sardines' nutrition. This is evolution. My body is truly evolving since the time I was credited as being a tyrant. The fact that you don't even acknowledge it as a degeneration is one of my Lord Valvatoris' many formidable powers. Fenric is voiced by Travis Willingham. For another to enhance your evolution, my lord. If you ever played Blaze Blue, he's Ragnar the Blood Edge. He's Guile in Street Fighter 4. And he's uh that looks rather juicy and delicious. Roy Mustang in Full Metal Alchemist. Wait a second. Yes, is there a problem? Valva Torres is, I believe, Patrick Seitz. Rick, once again, you have attempted to sneak this into my meal. The blood of humans! I'm not actually familiar with a lot of what he's done. I don't think he's done that much. But I really like him as Valva Torres. I only meant it as a gift to my master who has lost his power due to a foolish promise that he made in the past. Since you can't abide breaking promises, I figured it would be prudent for you to imbibe it unintentionally. Do you disapprove? How many times do I have to tell you? A proud demon like myself would never break a promise. How many times do I have to tell you? Promises <laughs> are supposed to be sacred. They're contra- I think I accidentally skipped the line there. retained your values as a demon, even after you lost your powers and fell to Hades. Prinnies! Lord Valvatoris, all of the Prinnies have been gathered. Please come to the Prinny Factory! You, Prinny! Repeat what you just said! <laughs> I, I only asked you to come to the factory! Fool! You forgot to include dude in all of your lines! He's not just saying that. Prinnies in all the other games have always said dude. See? <laughs> You're absolutely right, dude! I'm sorry, dude! Yeah, that's more like Too it. Too late! We start over from level one. <laughs> like how he's spinning as he gets carried away. Level one pretty task. Scrubbing the toilet. Aw. Can't even master the basics. The quality of the human souls is decreasing by the day. That is why. That is why I have to do this. I vowed to become a Prinny instructor the very day I fell to Hades because I knew that was my true calling. What an impressive ability to overwrite his memory of losing his power and being forced to take the least wanted job in the netherworld. This is another one of his formidable powers. He can convert any suffering that he's been through into something positive. Oh, way too good to be a lowly, pretty instructor, my lord. Someday, I, Fenric, will. 
Let's go, Fenric. It's time to fulfill our duty. These two rule. Episode one: Rebels of Hades. So it's a chapter by chapter game. There's no ex exploration. It's a hub world, and you just go to the next chapter. So progression is very linear and easy. No, have to talk to the right NPC, find out what to do, anything like that. It's very straightforward. So, I start off with Valvatoris and Fenric, and they give me a few generic classes. In this game, there are, um, there's three kinds of classes. There's the special, um, character classes, which is like Valvatoris and Fenric, they're special characters. There's generic classes, um, human classes, like these guys. That's a warrior, a mage, and a healer. And I can make as many of them as I want. And then there are monsters. Uh, monsters are generic as well. You can make as many of them as you want. But um, they're different from humans in that they can't use weapons. They have their own unique special skills. But, of course, there's a lot more to it than just that. See, they're giving me a monster, too. Prinnies are monsters, and this is a... Uh, Cat Saber? That, they used to be called Saber Cats. I think they're called something different now. They're mediocre. I mean, I'm sh anything be good if you g grind the hell out of it and you give it super high weapons, but... Um, personally, I don't really care for the abilities. Like, some classes specialize in defense. Um, for, the, for this, um, some in support. In this game, you really want as many high-powered offensive characters as possible because defense and healing is for wimps at least in the very late end game where everything just gets destroyed in one hit and here we have our home world hades so that's a nurse they will heal you every time after you fight for a little bit of cash and i'm just checking out my characters right now valva torres a pretty instructor his weapon forte is sword and spear which means well, he can equip any weapon he wants, but he'll only learn sword and spear skills naturally. So we have a paring knife, vinyl cloth, and imperial seal. Always read the descriptions for the, for the weapons. They're hysterical. Like, here, sardine. Want to know more? Then keep playing. <laughs> I mean, believe me, I am very curious as to what the fascination with sardines are. A young vampire who is a printing instructor in Hades. He loves sardines. Very apparent. Here's his ability, Bloody Battle. Increases attack by the number of defeated enemies by 5% each. So if you destroy 10 enemies, your attack will increase by 50%. That's insane. Starts with his Impaler Prince ability. Let the giant teeth nibble you down to size. Uh, the rain... Ah, here's Valvator... Uh, sorry, Fenric. Werewolf Assistant. All is for my lord, is his catchphrase. Increases stats by 30% when adjacent to Valvatores. So I want him to be next to him like all the time to increase his stats. He's good with axes and fists, and I'm having him use fists, because I love fists. Uh, the reason I like fists is because um, good damage, and they're also based on speed, and he has a high speed aptitude, so the speed lets you dodge hits. So it's uh, very handy. Like in Disgaea 2, the main character Adele used fists, and it's a, a, it's, it's a really good weapon. Swords is the generic one. There's swords, fists, axe, Bows, spears, guns, and staffs, and monster weapons. Uh, monster weapons, you equip the monsters, obviously. Each weapon can learn, I believe, eight um, weapon skills. Like, you'll, you'll see it soon, but like the very first sword skill is called um, Blade Rush. And you know, you can only use, you can only learn it if you have a forte in swords, and if you have one equipped. Monster weapons don't learn any monster weapon skills, but they do increase the stats of the monsters that have them equipped, and like I said, they use their own special monster skills. So that's my team. I was just looking at what they have. So like here's the Cat Saber. Calming Ori. Damage taken from monster enemies was, I think, halved. So, you know, if, if there's a lots of monsters on a on us on one particular map then you know it then then it'd be handy to have because it wouldn't take much damage eh, it's situational really i i don't think it's raw stats really make up for it 
And here I'm just uh, reading what all the characters say. They'll always say something different each chapter. And it's usually pretty funny, so... Let's see here. Here's, uh... Nekomata. <laughs> Aw, I told you it's gonna get hot. Made him a clear trash bag. For use in the bathroom. See, what other game has descriptions like that? It's... <laughs> Wanna be Axe. Yo, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Oh, jeez. Jesus Christ. So lame, Spice Girls. <laughs> the old one makeshift bow. Don't pull too hard, or it might break. See, because these are like the crappy weapons in the beginning. They're, obviously, they suck. The game knows it. It's just telling you flat out. Um, but eventually, when the weapons become so godlike, then the descriptions are like... I, I remember like a fist being called, like, Star Shatter, and it's like, finally, a way to punch the sun. <laughs> Assuming you've always wanted to be able to do that. <sighs> so, yeah, each chapter, they have new stuff to say. You check this, um... Um, and there's three treasure chests in the hub. They're not that hard to find, but... You know, take the time to go find them. Ah, uh, yeah, nothing's open right now because I'm still in the tutorial phase. These shops will open up one by one, and I'll explain what they do better when that part comes. Whenever I'm ready, we just go to the gatekeeper at the top, and she'll transport me to... Yeah, you can jump. She'll transport me to the next level I can go to. Here's a few more people. Also, the whole time, I've been trying to figure out how to zoom out the camera. I knew there was a way, I just wasn't sure how to do it. Um, it's tricky. You have to hold down square and press R1. I, I tried holding R1 and pressing square, which is, I think, how it was done in the older games. Excuse me. But, obviously, they changed it, and it threw me for a loop. It took a few chap it took a few episodes before I could uh, figure out how to do it, actually. See, I'm so far zoomed in, I can't really get a good vantage point of the whole hub. I don't even know how big this place is yet when I'm playing. You know, it's fun to explore. Check, just, just gotta make sure if there's no hidden shit. Like, I, I remember in, like, an older game, like, Phantom Brave. Like, in the very beginning, if you didn't find this very hard-to-find secret bottle character, which was really good, you wouldn't be able to get him again for the rest of the game. So... You know, pays to be to pace explore, and I'm just being cautious. And in Disgaea 2, um, there were like secret buttons you could press around the hub world, and when you did that all, it opened up um, the dark world, basically, which are just much harder versions of the of the normal levels with much higher enemies and very tough layouts. So you know, it pays to be thorough. But I'm done exploring at this point, and I'm finally ready to go to the first world. Basic controls. Now, this is just a tutorial, so I'm not going to read that. 